How's it going, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Crypto Clout. I am your host, FaZe Crypto. Today is July 29th, 2019. I'd like to start this video off by basically covering why I made the title of the previous Cardano video, how Cardano could be everything that Bitcoin tries to be, but could never actually be. And this is a sentiment that I see uh, all around crypto Twitter when it comes to people discussing Cardano in particular, a lot of people who share my passion for the project and a lot of people out there who generally try to make points that encapsulate the current paradigm of where we're seeing Bitcoin and uh, essentially how something like Cardano I mean, could actually rise up. Up. And um, I mean, it, of course, uh, not even paying attention to the fact that Cardano is dramatically undervalued from where it was at one point, people were paying a dollar for a Cardano, and now they only have to pay six cents to achieve a full. I mean, that's undervalued. If uh, you know, you want to talk about an undervalued cryptocurrency, I'd say when we talk about altcoins, I'm always sort of walking on eggshells because I don't like to over promote any sort of uh, you know any particular uh, altcoin, but I do think that Cardano is worth the attention, and I'm, I think that it's fair to say that the Cardano project is probably one of the more advanced horses to back when we want to talk about the uh, altcoin situation. And uh, I, so I want to talk about how uh, I saw this person who was chatting with me. It was basically uh, in the comment section of one of the live streams who was posing the question about tech technology and uh, essentially trying to make the argument about how uh, nobody uses old technology anymore. The nature of technology is that it advances. It continues to grow on itself. And he was asking, oh, who here uses MySpace, uh, for example, and then sort of branching upon that, telling people how uh, essentially the grand usage of a lot of these different technologies, it, it, people um, migrate over to the, what basically accomplishes their needs more uh, easily. And I think that this really does tie into the whole concept of Cardano being what Bitcoin wanted to be, but never really had the timing to be. Because when you think about what all the top cryptos on here. They're all here for a specific reason. And one of the things about Bitcoin is that it sort of gets grandfathered in. Uh, it's kind of an old idea. It's, very, it's a very 2008-2009 sort of technology when we want to think about it. And it is reflected in the speed. It's reflected in a lot of these other aspects of the... I mean, it's sort of an archaic blockchain and sort of... Uh, I mean, we've seen stuff like Ethereum and stuff uh, and the, the like sort of building upon the concept, which is why I often quote that sort of old crypto, uh, you know, sort of adage, which talks about how Bitcoin was digital gold and is sort of grandfathered in and has that number one position because of the name recognition. And, and it's a sort of a similar conversation that we bring up when we talk about these sort of baby Bitcoins. And it sort of comes up in the conversation about something like Digibyte and even Litecoin to a large extent. And when we're talking about fees, when we're talking about all these other aspects of Bitcoin, a great idea and the you know great concept, very successful in getting people talking about cryptocurrency to a large extent, has done its job very finely. Uh, and then to a certain extent, I think that a lot of the desirability that goes around Bitcoin is based on the fact that it was there during all of these different important movements that we've been seeing in the cryptocurrency sphere. That has a lot of people have been sort of getting introduced to cryptocurrency. Bitcoin has been at the forefront and really getting a lot of that publicity in the normie mind, in the sort of people who are unaware of the vast majority of altcoins and sort of have this vague recollection of what cryptocurrency is when you finally can, I mean, if you've had a conversation with somebody who doesn't necessarily work with cryptocurrency every single day or is less of a, you know, more of a uh, sideline speculator on the subject even, um, you'll notice that you sort of have to jog their memory by bringing up 
something like Bitcoin. Now, obviously, I'm not going to sit here and trash Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin dominance is 64.4%. Um, there's no, uh, you know, I don't have any chance trying to bash Bitcoin at this stage in the game. But I'm talking long term. I'm talking after we see the various different stages of Cardano. Uh, I mean, we're talking about after we get uh, Shelly and all these other things under our belt, uh, which is why I always have to commend Cardano for getting their foundation really laid down. Uh, whereas in similar situation, we see a lot of other cryptocurrencies just quickly trying to capitalize on the momentum that seems to be getting pumped into the greater sort of cryptocurrency space, the ones that are hogging the headlines. Um, but I'd make the argument and I'd use this sort of point to support that sort of idea when we want to talk about the future of smart contracts and actual usage of these technologies. Uh, I think that it's very uh, right next door to sort of make an argument about something like Cardano and the stability that we've seen from projects like XRP and all these other things. Um, I, I mean, it, it is just sort of something that I wanted to put out there. I'm not necessarily trying to sway your perspective one way or the other by bringing up these points. I just think that it's important to prefix sort of why, uh, I mean, this is the defense of my position as far as uh, where we could see something like Cardano really taking off. Um, I mean, of course, d do I think that uh, Bitcoin has a future in the cryptocurrency space? Of course I do, but I'm also very skeptical about the overall, uh, I mean, the situation of cryptocurrency. Um, it, it, I mean, we have to understand, I mean, Bitcoin loses $500 of its value. And uh, even though we're vastly in the green from where we were only a few months ago, it does have a psychological effect on the way that people view the space and whether that's going to go one way or the other. Um, we still have to pay attention to how a lot of these different things uh, they are definitely going to be interconnected and um, they are really leading off of one another, uh, connected at the hip uh, in that same idea. Um, you know, we've done, I mean, like this article right here, I wanted to bring up Libra definitely is accelerating the sort of um, trajectory of cryptocurrency, sort of making this uh, movement towards uh, you know this adoption sort of thing and getting uh, more of the powers that be uh, having that conversation about crypto currency and I think it is definitely an interesting conversation to have um, but at that same time um, you know I'd use all that same logic and, and uh, put it behind uh, something like Cardano because you think about it people in developed nations I mean they don't need cryptocurrency right now I mean the fact of the matter is if you live in the United States you live in you know 90% of Europe you have banking you have all these things and there's no real demand for uh, these this sort of uh, technology yet which is also another important point to be made um, the, the fact of the matter is as we see the, the sort of global community uh, you know, seeking to get in on the action now, that's going to be a real big um, indicator. I mean, <clears throat> so, I mean, we're moving quite along fast. And I'd say the time frame that we could expect, it does look very similar. I mean, we're, I mean but I think when we get towards Voltaire, when we get towards the latter part of 2020, we'll have a very uh, interesting idea of where cryptocurrency is going. Just s similarly, the same way the entire space is made sort of a 360 sort of uh, shift from where we were expecting the overall mentality of cryptocurrency as we could observe it in 2017. I think that there is a, a you know an interesting point to be made when you think about that argument that encapsulates the idea of uh, developing technology and uh, the actual demand for these things and I think that the people would want the fastest uh, you know more reliable um, and of course businesses that are doing all these different things I mean of course we're going to see as time moves forward the volatility aspect of something like Bitcoin will be a more stable price as more people jump on board I mean right now market cap only being at 263 uh, but I mean when we reach that trillion dollar it'll be a lot harder for the prices to be uh, you know manipulated by whales and so forth um, but at the same time I mean I just think that these were some interesting points to bring up uh, you know especially when you consider how uh, you now as technology moves forward I mean there'll be cryptocurrencies that will be made in the future that can accomplish the stuff that's cutting edge right now
now uh, in the blink of an eye. And that is an argument that needs to be taken into consideration, I think, for anybody who's thinking about cryptocurrency long term and, um, you know, holding these sort of things. And, you know, it's also sort of interesting. But uh, ADA could soon land on Coinbase. Uh, that would be pretty awesome. Just as a side note, um, interesting tweet there. Um, but yeah, anybody who's interested in connecting with us, you could do so on our Twitter. You know, that's at CryptoTuber on Twitter. Always interested in hearing what you guys have to say. Of course, remember this video is for entertainment, educational purposes only. No, of course, I'm not your dad. You know, this video is not financial advice, but I am always interested in hearing uh, what your opinions are. So, uh, you know, my opinion on Cardano still remains fairly bullish um, you know, in the long term. And I mean, if whatever you guys can think, whatever you want, I see these uh, prices still, a large part of the altcoins are still very much on sale. Um, and, you know, of course, as far as, uh, I mean, whatever, how long it takes Bitcoin to actually get uh, pe more people interested in crypto. Because oftentimes I feel like people are attracted by the uh, Bitcoin price movements. And that does have sort of a, a, an effect of bringing more people into the scene. But it's obviously not the most effective um, thing. I think more or less people are attracted to cryptocurrency through a number of other variables uh, which we'll cover in the future. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my uh, ideas here. You know, I think we covered some interesting um, concepts, um, but I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.